now in Galleria Ali, located in Karava, Finland. And today we are taking a look at the work of Jordi Lara Ochoa, a young artist from Mexico City who moved to Finland in 2006. Besides a Bachelor in Fine Arts, he has a Master's Degree in Architecture and he makes music as a hobby. The current one-man show is called Ascension and it presents 33 pieces of art. We will focus on the core of the collection, which is comprised of three pieces. Ascension 1 Sampantli an oil painting. Ascension 5. Embrace the Earth, a pyrography. Ascension 4. Soul Healer, an oil painting and the most important artwork of the exhibition. The word Ascension, according to Wikipedia, is the belief in some religions that there are certain rare individuals that have ascended into heaven directly without dying first. From a non-religious, spiritual perspective, Yordi's own definition of ascension is to rise from the ashes, to stand up after falling, to overcome a difficult time, to be resilient, and at the same time feel that our heart has been touched by a higher force, leading our path towards the light. We all react in different ways. Some of us cry, others destroy, some create. The majority of the works displayed here have been produced during recovery periods. The concept of Ascension One. Zampantli is very straightforward, blending of two cultures into one composition. The piece measures 50 by 60 centimeters and it has three elements. The pre-Hispanic wall of skulls represents death and life being components of the same cycle. And it displays the heads of the highly ritualized ball game present in Toltec, Mayan, and Aztec cultures, all from Mexico. In Mesoamerican culture, the act of being sacrificed represented the highest meaning and honor, feeding the gods. The ground is covered by autumn fallen leaves. It's a typical Norway maple, which is the only maple species naturally occurring in Finland. The central figure represents the purity of femininity, devotion, beauty, and fertility, the start of life where we all come from. As it happens in the Ascension series, the message is only about being a woman, the mystery it represents, and how this enigma has been admired through history. As to Ascension 5, Embrace the Earth. This work shows a simple composition. The background is a typical Finnish forest with some depth of field effect. And the central figure is a sharply detailed female character who is embracing the energy of the Earth, merging into one with nature. It's a strong call to go back to our primitive roots, to leave the artificial life and reconnect with nature. The technique is pyrography, which is a simple process of burning wood with a hot rod, usually a very small end, leaving dots that build patterns of light and shadow following the principle of monochromatic pointillism. There are about 20,000 points in this piece, which is half-inch plywood, and it measures 71 and a half 
by 30 centimeters. In the exhibition, this piece elicited positive responses from the observers because this technique hasn't been seen before in Finland, especially in this way of highly detailing the human body and background. On to Ascension 4, Soul Healer. The analysis of this particular piece will be done in two parts. First, a small introduction, and later on we will make an extensive analysis and go into deeper details. As mentioned before, the collection of Ascension is comprised of 10 different pieces, which vary in shape and technique but they all share similar subjects. The concept keywords of the collection of Ascension are strength, femininity, mysticism, beauty, life and death, balance and faith. The art piece of Ascension 4 is the only work that merges all of them into one single painting. This piece is the very heart of the exhibition, Ascension. It represents two worlds that have shaped Yordi's life. Mexico, with all its colors, happiness, culture, mountains, traditions, and folklore. And Finland, with all its beauty, honesty, sincerity, determination, development in many fields such as science, design, culture, education, and mostly, it is Yori's current home. Yori lived his childhood and grew up in Colonia Santa Maria La Ribera, located almost in the center of Mexico City. He was a shy and quiet kid who already possessed a very developed talent for drawing and music. After primary school attendance earlier in the day, Yordi spent his afternoons drawing machines, especially cars and trains. And later on, he started practicing human drawing, mostly learned by the influence of video games, which portrayed heroes, fighters, ninjas, and martial arts characters, both men and women. He developed also a mechanism for coping with the unstable home environment the fragile marriage which ended up in the breakup of his parents in 1991. He began drawing themes that would transmit his feelings from his inner core onto a piece of paper. By the time he started seventh grade, he knew the anatomy and positions of the human body well enough to draw hands, postures, faces, and profiles. He also developed an interest in metal reflections and complex refractions multiple sources of light, direct and indirect shadows, light bounces, and other optic effects. Yordi stepped officially into the arts at the age of 12 by a seemingly unrelated fluke. His parents enrolled him in a summer sports camp for children in Tlatelolco, Mexico City. He already struggled with the emphasis on sports and games, with everyone competing fiercely. In sports, there is always only one winner, and the rest are losers, including little Yordi. He desperately told his parents he didn't want to go there anymore. Fortunately for Yordi, an aunt urged his parents to put him into an art school. The original idea was a two-month summer course so Yordi did not stay at home doing nothing all summer. It actually wound up being a three-year career at the Ateneo del Anahuac, an institute of independent education created by master muralist Susana Lozano, separated from the system and mainstream trends Twenty years ago, it was located in Santa Maria La Ribera, Colonia, Mexico City. 
Today, the school is located in Lerma, Estado de Mexico. Susana Lozano died in 2011, and the Atenejo is now run by her son, Alex Lozano, and his wife, Gloria Sobrepera. His teacher, Susana Lozano, and his classmates were all adults and many years older than Yordi, but they left an indelible mark of harmony and learning on the young man. It was a small paradise for the young artist. Yordi's Portrait, number one. The work is an oil painting made mainly with black and white palette and gray tones in between. It is made on stiff cardboard and it displays the date of 1998 and the text, auto number one. The only color shows a blood red open scar, probably as a sign of the fragmented family he grew up in after the official divorce of his parents in 1994. The background has a white textured, strong brush stroke. And the first plane, the face of the artist, shows a very flat and polished brush stroke. It's a copy of his photos for military service when he was still 17 years old, which he later refused to do due to the corrupt establishment in the authorities that rule Mexico. Yordi continued his studies as a teenager in high school, and in 1998, he began his college studies with a scholarship at Universidad Iberoamericana in order to obtain a bachelor and a master in architecture with a minor in urbanism. It took seven years for him to achieve that goal, and due to the extreme demands of such a profession, he didn't have time left for art and he remained inactive for 10 years. In the early 2000s, he traveled to the US to visit relatives, loosening up his English language and without really knowing it, opening new doors for the future. During the mid 2000s, he already started to travel alone abroad first as part of his final work for architecture, and then as a new habit that would definitely change his life. In 2003, he went to Cuba. Then in 2004, he went for a long trip to Russia, France, Israel, Egypt, and the US. In the winter of that same year, he made his first visit to Finland. There, he became fascinated with the culture, people, heavy metal music, technology, traditions, and sauna. He chose this country as his next goal for continuing his postgraduate studies. In October 2005, he traveled to France, Spain, Sweden, Finland, Israel, and again the U.S., and he applied for Helsinki University of Technology to be successfully accepted in 2006. This was the perfect excuse for him to leave everything behind and start a new life in Finland with four bags full of clothes, laptops, books, and a few musical instruments.
Coyote arrived in Helsinki in 2006. He was hired by an architectural firm for five years. He lived alone during the first three years, and later he would come back to art due to the lack of work in architecture. Jordi found a very helpful activity, and at the same time an effective therapy that helped him to cope with the tough times of scarce opportunities for young foreign architects in the first month of the World Economic Recession of 2009. Also in 2009, Jordi starts the first paintings of what would later become the collection of Ascension. Ascension 4 Soul Healer The painting Ascension 4 originally came from a photography project developed in collaboration with the Finnish-French photographer Karina Boissonnière. The idea was to take a photo shoot using the concepts of feminine energy, bohemian clothing, women's bravery, healthiness, and body-soul balance. It was made just for fun and to try some experiments with tribal pre-Hispanic makeup made by Yorty, handmade Mexican indigenous clothing, and jewelry provided by the firm Casa de Emilio. Yorty saw very strong potential in one of the images, so he chose to make a new version of it with the permission of the photographer, who gladly agreed and liked the idea. The photography was about to become something different. This work took 13 days to complete, working an average of 16 hours a day. The measurements of the canvas are 70 by 50 centimeters, and it's made in Mexico by Casa Serra. The oil pigments are Windsor and Newton, and the colors used in this and all the paintings made by Jordi Lara Achoa since the beginning of his artistic production in 1993 are only five. Red, blue, yellow, titanium white, and ivory black. The reason for this very limited palette is economy and precision. The artist says it's cheaper buying only five colors and custom building secondary and tertiary colors out of the primary ones, rather than buying 20 different scales of browns or skin colors. Yordi doesn't use a wood palette. Instead, he recycles old magazines and uses them as temporal and disposable palettes. He sticks them with masking tape to a surface, bench, or table. This allows him to have both hands free when working, and he usually paints with two or three brushes in the right hand at the same time. This way, he can instantly switch sizes when necessary, accelerating considerably his work rhythm. He places his brushes in independent stands and selects them, cleans, or puts them back in their original slots with his left hand, always keeping a logical order of sizes and shapes. The frame was mounted on a bookshelf to work on it, because Yordi didn't have an easel, or enough space for one. Yordi is used to working with few resources and builds his own tools. Brush brands are irrelevant to him, but the important thing when selecting a brush is that its hair lasts long and that the shape doesn't get deformed. To avoid this, when not using the brushes in a long time, he protects them with masking tape and stores them in a vertical position. When painting with a knife, he prefers to paint on wood or cardboard. It has to be a solid surface. He seldom uses masks or stencils for paintings, or with glazing or other artificial transparency methods. 
Yordi does not use fan shaped brushes. For brush cleaning, he uses thinner. The stronger, the better. He also uses toilet paper, cardboard, cereal boxes, and old recycled clothes to clean his work tools. Due to the fact that Yordi has always lived in small spaces, such as apartments or lofts, he learned the discipline of always working clean and carefully in order to avoid accidents. He likes systematic order and states that a clean studio means a faster and nicer work, thus better quality and higher level results. There are three main messages in Ascension 4. The first is healing. For all of us who have had a difficult time, accident, or loss, the painting transmits the message of well-being, of feeling better, of having mercy on ourselves, and of standing up after falling hard. The second message is protection. Probably because Yordi's childhood was surrounded by women, he now feels the need of providing protection to women, spreading his view about femininity. And finally, strength. In this tough world, mainly dominated by men and many times very unfair ones, the artist wants to display the strength, complexity, and power of being just a woman. Now, the technical details of Ascension 4. The technique used in this art piece is oil on canvas, where 20 brushes of different widths were used, from 2 millimeter to 30 millimeter. Yordi chooses his brush strokes depending on the effect he wants to transmit. For example, in the background we see apparent abstract shapes with some lines and random traces here and there. And the pigment has a rough texture obtained with very thick, flat brushes. Quite different brush strokes are found in the first plane. Face, skin, eyes, and hair. Where more polished work is achieved, especially in the small details. In order to show metallic reflections in the golden curls, a high contrast work is done in every curl to get the correct result in the hair. The same effect can be found even in the ambient occlusion effect caused by the slight amount of shade between the side cheeks and the volume of the air, where round brushes were used to obtain a fading shadow effect that at the same time gives the illusion of reflecting the hair color onto the shiny skin. The background is actually a traditional blanket showing Popo Katipet carrying the sleeping woman, Istachi Huato. But the image doesn't show clearly because it's upside down, out of focus, and only a few elements are noticeable. A hand, a plume, a shoulder with part of the neck and chin of the woman, her hair, and a flower ornament. The artist decided to respect the exact shapes in the picture, but colors were altered with blacks, reds, whites, and blues. The depth of field effect was exaggerated in order to provide a more ambiguous result, leaving the background in a much less important role than the first plane, the facial expression. He already thought that the original image was good by itself, and by making a reinterpretation of it with oil on canvas, it would result in a much more impressive piece with a stronger message. The transition from photography to oil painting brought unexpected and interesting results. The first plane represents the expression of a muse, 
with the eyes being the strongest element, showing her focused sight, perhaps in hypnosis or in a divine state of grace. The makeup around the eyes, eyelids, eyebrows, and half of the nose and cheeks is a deep metallic blue, making an illusion of the Mayan or Aztec primitive colors, reserving blue for honor. Also, a bit of brown is found under the eyebrows in order to provide shade and accents in the facial structure. And in between brown and blue, we find violet, a color that was obtained by mixing carminic acid from insects such as cochinilla and organic blues. This expensive color was used only in royal codices. The rest of the face has very little makeup, which is the same tone of natural skin. Yordi likes representing truths and facts, especially if they mean something or tell stories. Some scars in the right cheek and a bit of freckles can be seen with ease. These small details leave clues for the observer to imagine and see that this woman has fought hard to keep on going forward in life. The neck and arms don't have any makeup, and skin irregularities can be seen, such as birthmarks, wrinkles, skin color variations, sun tanning, or flaws. This detail is a straight statement from the artist against the trend of correcting everything in Photoshop. The current image market world and how almost everything is fake and ridiculously retouched in order to create a false perfection. From fashion, to food, to architecture and everything in between. Perfect lies are short fashion trend, the artist says. The ornaments are very simple, only a thin braid band across the forehead and black feather earrings, which we can only see covering the right side of the model's neck. The mouth displays a serious and focused expression. Lips are thick and pinkish red, the natural color, and the mouth corners show a hidden smile, a very common Scandinavian feature. Yet the shape of the mouth is relaxed and comfortable. It just shows its natural state and shape. The atmosphere in Ascension 4 is indeed different from our normal and realistic world. It does have realistic components, but the aim is not to fit in realism or surrealism, hyperrealism or primitivism, or anyism, but it explores the new trends of crossover art with intercultural mixtures, such as a Scandinavian model with finished features through the lens of a Mexican artist with Aztec roots. In the current generation of the present year, 2014, we see that international barriers and borders are virtually broken due to the hyper-connected world we live in, the internet being the main driver. Many youngsters speak foreign languages much easier than older generations. They learn faster and with better tools than, for example, a half century ago. Baby boomers, abroad and everywhere, were some of the first ones in blabbering globally new expressions like the Beatles songs or the Rolling Stones lyrics. Now it's even normal finding a girlfriend or boyfriend across the globe, having mainly English as the common language. It is perhaps this intercultural generational phenomenon that makes Ascension 4 a peculiar painting, because it changed Yordi's life when finding the love of his life. The muse in the Ascension series is his wife, 
and her name is Jenny Lara Ochoa. Silloin kun Jordin kanssa tavattiin, että tähän taiteilijan kanssa elämiseen joskus tottuisi, mutta nyt voin kyllä myöntää, että ei siihen varmaan ikinä totu menosta tulevaa villimpää, mitä kauemmin me tunnetaan. Musta tuntuu, että mun perhe ja läheistä on joutunut jo tottumaan tähän. Minä päivänä ne ei tiedä, että mitä, mitä uutisia meiltä tulee tai mitä tapahtumia me ollaan järjestämässä. Ja musta on, että jollain tavalla me ollaan pystytty rikastamaan muidenkin ihmisten elämää, mikä usein on taiteessa myös tarkoituksena. Ennen Jordin tapaamista voin kuvitella, että mä olisin jonkun taiteilijan muusa tai että mä uskaisin, että uskaltaisin lähteä mukaan tällaisiin projekteihin. Ja vielä näin voimallisesti, mitä Jordin kanssa ollaan lähdetty. Meksikolainen nainen voisi olla yhtä itsenäinen kuin suomalainen nainen. Meksikolaisella naisella olisi samat oikeudet ja samat mahdollisuudet kuin suomalaisella naisella. Sí, claro. Mucho éxito con todo y... Que la gente hace muchas cosas locas como nosotros. Qué divertido haciendo estos documentarios. Ascensión. Es que se suma muy bien, ¿qué nada? Vuodet, oikeastaan kaikki se muutos, joka lähti vyörymällä eteenpäin, silloin kun me Jordin kanssa tavattiin. Ja kuinka me kumpikin noustiin tukkasta kuin Phoenix-linnut ja löydettiin uusia puolia itsestämme ja uusia kykyjä. Ää, musta tuntuu, että se on mun polku ylös nousemukseen, eli mä ei päättyä sen syyn.